call to get order the sixth meeting of the 2013-2014 Common Council. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. Thank you. Next is roll call. The clerk will call the roll. Fourteen present. Next, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next are the approval of the minutes. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Second. It's been moved and second to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen ayes. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to the swearing in of Alder person elect Joel Pentico. I'll uh, just note that Alderman Ty Dassler uh, had a planned vacation out of state and he was sworn in earlier by uh, the clerk and uh, will return and be here for the next council meeting. Joel, would you please step forward? I want you to come here behind. after me, I, please state your name. I, Joel Pentico. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially. And will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the Office of Alderman. Of the Office of Alderman. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Next, we'll go on to council appointments. Alderman Hammond. Do you have to read them first? Honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Joel Pentico to be considered for appointment to the Public Works Committee to fill the unexpired term of Jeremy Decker, whose term expires 4 21 2014. Ty Dassler to be considered for appointment to the Salary and Grievance Committee and the Finance Committee to fill the unexpired term of Todd Wolf, whose term expires on 4-21-2014, and Scott Lewandowski to be considered for appointment to the Architectural Review Board to fill the unexpired term of Todd Wolf, whose term expires on 4-21-2014, signed by the Mayor. Now Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, I'd like to move to suspend the rules. Second. It's moved and seconded to suspend the rules. All those in would the clerk please call the roll? Go. Fourteen eyes. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Uh, move to confirm the appointments as read by the city attorney. Second. It's moved and second to confirm the appointments read by the city attorney. All those in favor, please uh, press your I button or your nay button. Clerk can call the roll. Fourteen eyes. Next is the public forum. Is anyone registered? <clears throat> yes, we have two this evening. First on our list would be Joanne Scribner. Joanne, if you could come up to the front, please. Joanne, I need your home address, please. Three Seneca Trail. Three Seneca? Yes. Hold on just a second.
Okay, you will have five minutes. Go ahead. First of all, thank you, Mayor Vandersteen and Sheboygan Common Council for giving me the opportunity to speak here again tonight. You have noticed that two weeks ago and again tonight, I'm not really addressing Sheboygan Common Council issues <coughs> or concerns, but I will address those at future public forums. Whenever I do speak, though, I always relate everything to Sheboygan in my own quirky way. Okay. Have you visited Sparky's Hot Dog Stand yet? Especially the one at the Superior Discount Liquor Store on South 8th Street near Schwartz Fish Market in the parking lot over there by the South 8th Street Bridge that goes over the Sheboygan River, he once in so. Let me tell you a few facts about Sparky's that you might not know unless you took notes like I did. Did you know that you can hear Calypso music at Sparky's, music that reminds you of the islands like the Bahamas or St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands, songs like Yellowbird, the girl from Ipanema, and uh, Margar Margaritaville, sung by Jimmy Buffett, tequila. On the Sparky's menu, you can find regular hot dogs for $2.50, chili dogs for $2.75, cheese dogs for $2.75, Kraut dogs for $2.75 for all your German Krauts out there. Slaw dogs for $2.75. Chili cheese dogs for $3. Kraut cheese dogs for $3 for all you German Krauts out there who love Wisconsin cheese. And don't forget to go to the Sheboygan County Historical Society Museum next to Sunny Ridge Nursing Home on Erie Avenue and check out the book, Cheese Factories of Sheboygan County you'll actually find my childhood house there in that book on Highland Road. Last but not least, don't forget the Sparky Chicago style hot dog for $3.50, which includes, and I have the menu here so kindly given to me by Steve, uh, includes cucumbers, tomatoes, diced onions, relish, mustard, sport peppers, pickle spear, and celery salt. And so, other items on the menu include cheese nachos, $2.75, chili cheese nachos, $3, walking tacos, $2. I didn't see any prices for, listed for the standing or running tacos. Sorry about that poor attempt at humor. <laughs> Snacks, $1. Potato chips like Jay's Original, Lay's Classic Barbecue and Sour Cream and Onion, Fritos Original and Honey Barbecue Twists, Ruffles, cheddar and sour cream, Cheetos puffs and crunchers, kettle cooked potato chips, ice cream, bomb pop, one dollar, Sunday nut cone, like a drumstick, one dollar and fifty cents, root beer float, two dollars and fifty cents, beverages, soda, Coke, Diet Coke, Sprite, Mountain Dew, A and W root beer, root beer, vanilla flavored A and W root beer, Dr Pepper, Sun Kissed Orange, and Country Time Lemonade. Bottled water, $1. Flavored drinks, $1. And again, the root beer float for $2.50. Prices include sales tax, which is both convenient, full disclosure, and transparent, unlike our federal government. The slogan of Sparky's is, no shoes, no shirt, no problem. Cool, huh? Cash only, no $50 or $100 bills, if you're lucky enough to have them in your wallet or purse. Don't forget the hours of Sparky's being open, weather permitting, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. through 6 p.m., Saturday, 11 a.m. through 2 p.m. Did you vote online yet for Sparky's hot dogs being the best of Sheboygan County for 2014? I still like my paper, you know, in the Sheboygan Press, paper ballot, um, because there are some of us who are older here who just don't like to do things online that much. Paper. Just keep that in mind, maybe. But I guess I could go online to vote. I could. Sheboygan has some of the best restaurants, hot dog stands, ice cream shops, and pizza places. Don't you agree? Thank you. Thank you for those Thank comments. You. Uh, next on our list, <clears throat> excuse me, Milt Storm. Can I have your home address, please? Yeah, this is at 1736 Marvin Court, 
and that's in Sheboygan. And you will I get to see my blood pressure. have five minutes, sir. I'll try. Thank you for this opportunity to address the Common Council this evening. Every morning, I usually go to McDonald's, but I was a little late this morning to visit my conservative friends and my liberal friends as well. And the reason I was late was because there appeared an article in my Sunday, or Sunday, my Monday morning's paper. And I uh, accidentally did put some maple syrup on there, so it got a little poor. But it says here that three officers earn master's degree. And I do know Scott Middlestead, and I know Kurt Zimple. I don't know Doug too well, but I had known Chris Demogowski, our police chief. But he blew me away with some of the reporting in this article. Organizational, we have stressed the values of integrity, leadership, professionalism, competency, accountability, and teamwork, as well as strong belief that we should seek constant improvement and embrace change, police chief. Well, to the seven, I would add another one. That is transparency or understanding. Now, I'd like to uh, read a uh, press article that was in the Sheboygan Press. I think it was March. Yes, it's March 28, 2008, and it's written by a former older person. Be wary of council candidates with emotional ties to the police department. When I was elected older person in the Sheboygan two years ago, police chief David Kirk gave me some great advice. He said I would be faced with a lot of tough decisions. He said the best way to make good choices was to remove the emotion from the situation and based my decisions on the facts. Being that I didn't have any emotion ties to the city, it wasn't hard for me to be unbiased. Well, she happened to be the daughter-in-law of a former mayor. I asked questions, laid the facts on the table, and kept emotions out of my decisions. I have serious concerns about the emotional ties some of the older Matic candidates have with the Sheboygan Police Department. Bill Wagaman, Bruce Christensen, and Lyle Vanderweiss are all retired policemen. Barbara Tosinski is currently married to a policeman. <coughs> Dimple Adams and Susan Lessard have publicly shown their bias for the police department on multiple occasions. That's a big fat you know what. I believe if it will be extremely difficult for these people to make decisions in the best interest of the taxpayers. Sheboygan is blessed with having an excellent police force, which is why we are the sixth safest community in the United States of America. Electing people with, emotion, with emotional ties to the police isn't the answer to the issues that face the taxpayers of Sheboygan. Well, that leads me out, because I'm one of the most compassionate people for the police department. And that is written by Renee Shusha. I service her father's for the Law's TV set, and also her grandfather, Lutz Susha. I know him very. I attended the funeral of Mayor Richard, and I did <coughs> speak to Renee. And our Democrat DNA, when she had the trouble with Susan Hundley, called her loose lips. I'm not going to say what anything he meant to that. Now, don't, don't we, <coughs> a number of years ago, my son and I were served by a young Hmong lady with a name tag of Grace. Now amazing what a name of Grace is. Now I'm not gonna sing, but I like to repeat, amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I have transparency. I learned transparency from my mother. 60 years ago, when she said to me and my brother that we could have everything the chicken laid except the egg. I call that understanding. In closing, if you have any police officers besides the three mentioned in the press, a word of kindness may lift their spirits into understanding or is a transparency. Thank you very much. Thank you, Milt. That would be it for this evening. 
Thank you. Next, we'll go on to the mayor's uh, comments. We have a few announcements. The capital improvements uh, committee will be meeting on 7, 8 of 13. Uh, Benjamin Moore Paint, uh, What Matters uh, program is still going on, so please continue to go to paintwhatmatters.com and vote for the city of Sheboygan. We have a chance to repaint four city blocks if we win that contest. Uh, the 4th of July parade, we just want to remind people that we have a new route. The parade will proceed uh, from Center Avenue up A Street to Michigan, Michigan to, to Broughton Drive. On uh, June 27th, that's a Thursday, the Flats neighborhood is having a neighborhood meeting. That, that Flats area is Illinois Avenue south to Georgia Avenue and 9th Street west to 14th Street. The police uh, department has uh, a special uh, press release they put out. They're holding a public meeting on Tuesday, June 25th at 6 p.m. at the DeLand Community Center to, uh, for the development of an urban wildlife control plan. During this meeting, residents will be able to provide input on a number of deer in the city of Sheboygan, the impact on residents, and their thoughts regarding uh, the deer population. The department will also share information regarding a recent deer population survey and the process for developing an urban wildlife control plan. And uh, the Park Department and, and Department of Public Works have been working recently on a partnership with CRS, a company from Verona, Wisconsin, to manage the quarry for us. And I'd like to announce that this Saturday, June 22nd, uh, the quarry beach will be opened and their hours will be from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily. Uh, all day passes are gonna be um, for, from ages three to nine, 350. After four o'clock, those go, go down to 250. And for 10, age 10 plus, the uh, all day pass is $5, and the four to seven pass would be $4. They also have water bikes, pedal boats, kayaks, and stand up paddle boards for rent. Next, we'll go on for a hearing for the proposed assessment for water lateral replacements in Erie Avenue from North 8th Street to North 13th Street. Is there anyone that would wish to be heard? Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion. The clerk call the roll. Sorry. Thank you. 14 eyes. <clears throat> Thank you. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, this would include items 3.1, 3.1 rather, for, to 3.2. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and put all resolutions upon their passage. Second. Okay. Thank you for that motion. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Okay. 14 ayes. <clears throat> Next is communications and petitions. Item 4.1 and 4.2 be referred to the Public Works Committee. Uh, Alderman Lassard. Yes, thank you. I would like to have um, 4.1 filed. The um, situation's been handled already. Thank you. Is there a second to that second. motion? The motion is to file 4.1. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Please press your I button or oppose your nay. The clerk uh, will call do, the roll. We can do the I. All eyes on this one. Right? Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. So then 4.2 will be referred to Public Works. Next is reports of officers. Um, items 5.1 through 5.4 will be referred. Under resolutions, we have 6.1, a resolution by Alderman Hammond Carlson, Heidemann, Bellinger, 
authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 2013 budget, established appropriation for street improvement projects. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd ask that we suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. Is there any discussion? Will the clerk call the roll? Fourteen ayes. Under suspension, Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I move we put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion. Any discussion on the motion? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to know what account this uh, $250,000 is coming out of, and I also want to know what the balance in that account is. If Mr. Amodio could tell us that, please. Thank you for that question. Jim, would you care to step forward and uh, enlighten us? This would be coming uh, currently out of the gen general fund surplus funds. Um, we uh, are going to receive the audit uh, for 2012, and based on the draft we got, we'll have uh, some funds available for the council to distribute, and this would be one of them uh, under uh, road improvements. And uh, right now, this would the 250 would go against uh, the underrun surplus. If that answers your question. Do you have an amount of the surplus? Uh, it's roughly 1.2 million. So the 1.2 million minus the 250. Correct. Thank you. Any other discussion? <laughs> Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just uh, for the benefit of those uh, out at home, this uh, money is being um, provided to the Public Works Department to do some resurfacing of much needed um, or badly needed road repairs. Um, so. Again, the idea behind this is that we can start repairing some of the roads that um, have fallen into disrepair um, over the course of the last several years. So in case people are wondering what the funding is for, um, that's what it's for. Thank you very much for those comments. Any other discussion? All those, in, uh, if you're in uh, favor of the motion, press your I button or your nay button. The clerk will call the roll. 14 ayes. Uh, item 6.2 will be referred to Public <coughs> Protection and Safety. 6.3 will be referred to Public Works. Under Reports of Committees, item 7.1 is an RC by the Law and Licensing Committee recommending denying a beverage operator's license number 9946 based on his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the licensed activity, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vander Wheely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Moved and seconded to accept and adopt. Any discussion? Is Brian Shaw here this evening? He is not here. Um, he was invited to our committee meeting twice and he did not show it either time. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? Fourteen ayes. Next is item 7.2, that'll be referred to public protection and safety. Under ordinances, item 8.1 will be referred to the City Planning Commission. In an, uh, number nine, we have a notice to discharge the Capital Improvements Commission regarding RC 446-12-13 by finance. Alderman Lewandowski. I would like to make a motion to discharge from the Capital Improvements Commission. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Under discussion, Alderman Boren? No, Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't see any reason to circumvent the current process for this. Um, the funds for this um, capital project, as is normal, is re re recommended out of the Capital Improvements Commission. There's a meeting July 8th which is you know, three and a half months earlier than it normally is just to be able to take up this item. So I don't see a reason to move this out of committee um, and bring it to the committee of the whole um, when we're gonna be meeting as a capital improvements committee in about two weeks. So 
I'm going to vote no on this. Um, I think you know to circumvent the process doesn't make any sense to me when we have a meeting coming up in a couple weeks. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I guess my question is why, since we do have this meeting planned, why are we trying to pull it out to be put on Wednesday, Wednesday's agenda? Thank you. Thank you for that question. Alderman Boren, would you care to answer that? Uh, thank you, Mayor. There was no indication of a capital improvements meeting until this was put on the agenda. And the reason, the reason why I wanted to bring this forward is to finally have an up and down vote on it. We've been getting, the, Alderman Lewandowski and I have been getting the big stall on this since January. And it hasn't been uh, easy for quite a few people to get in out of City Hall. And I'd like to finally get an up or down vote on this. So if there is a vote to go ahead with the project, that we get it done before winter. But I find it really ironic that all of a sudden a capital improvements meeting is scheduled just when this appears to, on the agenda to remove it from that committee. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I find it a little bit offensive that um, Mr. Bourne would indicate that we're playing games with, with this. We have a process um, of, of sending things through to capital improvements um, to uh, vote. And you know, I apologize to him if he didn't think it went fast enough so that he and Alderman Lewandowski had um, the lift in place. But I have not gotten an email or a phone call from one person indicating that this has been an inconvenience not having the lift in the back and that the ramp in the front was an issue. So we've moved the committee meeting up three months. Um, typically this meeting is held in October as part of our budgeting process. We're moving into July. We've got citizen members on this committee that we have to coordinate with. Um, so again, if you want to think it was a stall tactic, be my guest. But again, I think we're trying to get this done as soon as possible, but yet again, make it part of the process of the overall capital improvements. Thank you. Any other discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Four, <clears throat> excuse me, four eyes, nine noes, and one abstention. Motion fails. Next, we'll move on to other matters. City Attorney. 10.1 10, 10 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2014 and June 30, 2015. That'll be referred to law and licensing. 10.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Kevin Hartle requesting a waiver to the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 1419 Forsyth, Department 8. That will be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. 10.3 is a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a contract between the city and Short Elliott Hendrickson, Inc. in the amount of $14,470 for the design of the Pennsylvania Avenue siphon modifications. That will be referred to Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion. Will the clerk please call the roll for adjournment?